Hey everybody, this is Marsilio, and thanks a lot for spending some time on your weekend for my take on the markets, where I put uh, technicals and timing together for a unique angle on price action. And uh, just a very quick review, you know, last last week, um, last couple of weeks been pretty good in terms of take. I also got a little lucky on the on the data since. Um, you know, I was looking for risk on trades to be supported through June 6th. Uh, a lot of Finatros were on the same page in this regard. And that definitely came through. And then due to the data release on uh, Friday, did get some bearish action rejection uh, there, which I was thinking that should happen. Um, you know, June 5th, 6th toppy, 7 and 12 looked for a down. Um so all that was totally on track. I wish I could be this perfect all the time. Um, and for the coming week, you know, uh, well, I'll give you a synopsis of what I'm expecting for the coming week shortly. The other thing that's, uh, if you're new to my work um, or interested at all in uh, very short-term trading, intraday, especially in ES, uh, some people are paying more attention to what I call wiggles. You know, musings and wiggles are kind of tongue in cheek because there's a lot that goes behind the musings and a lot that goes behind these so-called wiggles. But um, there was, uh, I did one YouTube where I asked uh, perplexity, the chances of three events happening that actually were listed in my time just based on probability of high proximity to higher low of the day within two minutes. And then another one bang on a, a key high, uh, higher low. And perplexity gave me one in 15 million. So I'm not going to argue with that one. But here's, um, I'm going to do a more detailed video this coming week on what these represent. And they don't all work, but this is just one from last week that was especially um, you know, pretty clear that one of the larger turn events was just a few minutes from the high of the day. And then um, a couple of these others, I had a good read that the, the smaller blue lines uh, would be changes of character. Uh, and especially down, and you can see sometimes, some not every time, but sometimes they're near little. This is a one minute chart, so they're in play. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that. It's too much to cover in one. So, um, okay, so now on to what everyone's here for next moves. So, basically, you know, this week we've got CPI data and the Fed. So, I, I wish I had a method to predict economic data relative to expectations. I just don't have that. And I really um, look at the markets as a whole and then think and then apply technicals, apply timing, and then think what's the most likely move. Now, last week, uh, there was no doubt that the market got surprised by the data. And why do I say that? Because I put in the Fed's own uh, rate cut uh, and, and so this chart, uh, thanks to ChatGPT uh, making it easier for me, I mean, it's not the most amazing data viz, but it does show. So the red line no, is no cut. And, and so that probability was actually ticking down in June, uh, also in line with ECB and Bank of Canada. But due to the jobs data, boom, back up, you know, no chance of cut. And look at the chance... Um, of a cut was creeping up, even though it reached a very low level and it come down from kind of May, you know, April, May, people are getting used to the idea it's not gonna happen in this meeting. It was starting to increase, but then boom. So th that's what happened. And that's why um, uh, let's get to some charts that some of these moves were so big in the dollar and the 10 year yield. So uh, market, I think was a little surprised by that. And, but now, um, we're going to see, you know, Jay Powell, he's, uh, he, he's going to maintain, he always talks about data, but especially this week, he's going to talk about data, but also the jobs data flops around and gets revised and he's pretty sensitive to global, um, you know, the global impact of everything. So cannot assume a bearish scenario. I'm really flex. I, I think we need to go into this week with flexibility and say, well, okay, here's a bullish version. Here's a bearish version. And here is the data or the charts I'm going to be looking at. Uh, to help me um, position correctly. So first of all, you know, monthly charts. Uh, Bitcoin's definitely, I'm starting with Bitcoin because it's something notable. I'm not going to go through each chart on this, but Bitcoin's getting sold up here near the highs, obviously, the monthly close high, whereas, um, you know, socks and tech, like that's that's still, but even this may be slowing down. We're heading in the summer months 
And, um, you know, this has been an amazing run. So pros are going to, you know, gets up there at the top of the monthly Bollinger Band with this kind of RSI, you know, lighten up. I'll say more about this um, maybe towards the end of the video. So here are some specific levels. So in terms of the technicals I use and whether or not there's a turn, I use the people that are familiar with my work know that I use the pivot levels quite a lot. And most important are yearly levels. And, and so this chart is a weekly chart, got yearly and half year only. And this is um, the NASDAQ. So it is testing its yearly R1. Above that, there's really no bearish scenario as far as I'm concerned for tech. But if that gets sold and rejected, that would be a different story. Um, SOX also is starting to approach its yearly R2 almost near tag. So that's another big yearly level that I'll be watching. I don't think it's going to take it out on first hit. It hasn't actually uh, done that. Um, let's see, I'm going to go to uh, this so you can see. Yeah, very close, very close. And actually, um, semiconductors um, did, uh, they're not on a major level, but it's enough. So these are like different, SOX is the index semiconductor ETF. It is on something that might be enough for, for some type of top. So also be watching that. Then in terms of the other main indexes, uh, we've got Dow under its quarterly pivot and slightly under a June pivot. Those are the orange lines after rebounding from S1 levels down the green line. And then Russell is obviously weaker below, clearly below both pivots, below a falling uh, daily 50 average, which is the slope is important in my work. So this is where the trouble is. And, you know, I think in coming weeks, um, well, I'll say, I'll say more about that in, in a minute. Um, so these are, it, um, so Dow, you know, if Dow recovers its quarterly pivot, that's more bullish. If uh, NASDAQ uh, maintains above this yearly R1, that's more bullish. But if j comes out hawkish, that's going to get sold and that's going to break. It's, this is going to look like a one day fractional above and then a key turn. So it's really just in play, watching to see how it plays out. And then other confirming indicators that I rely on upon a lot. The other thing I want to point out before I get to those, since most people I know are looking at cryptos, um, this is a weekly chart of Bitcoin. So it's up, up against its half year R3, which may be enough to stop it. But uh, And the, the 10MA is starting to slope down. But if it did clear... You know, they, could we see a fast run from 70 to 80 and get up to yearly R3? I, I mean, we could. It cannot be completely ruled out before the year is over that we see something like that. There's been a, there's a lot of time spent up here. And if for whatever reason data comes in and Jay Powell suggests cut, you know, dollars going to drop back down and cryptos could could still go. So I, it just cannot be ruled out. And then... Um, Ethereum already got to its yearly R3, and so far that's the top. Uh, so, um, it, but it could go back and potentially test that level. Uh, and the other thing I want to point out is that right now everyone's kind of asking, you know, all the trends are up on Bitcoin. It's a, when I say that, I mean it's above its all pivots yearly, half yearly. Uh, quarterly, monthly, and above all moving averages, and all with a positive slope. So it's really not. I, I like to go with the trend. And right now, Bitcoin, even though it's been stuck up here, trends are still up. Uh, Ethereum, above all pivots, just below a couple moving averages have been lagging a little bit. Uh, so things like this uh, matter also in my work. Now, onto the confirming um, indicators that I, I do want to point out. Uh, VIX, I think, is a, a fantastic tool. Nowhere near. VIX is not worried. Smart money is not really worried. And even despite Friday, VIX came down quite a lot. And that's why S&P finished flat. So maybe there was a knee-jerk reaction to the jobs, but the smart money is like, eh, some, there's, there'll be headlines on Monday like, oh, the revisions or, oh, the component or whatever it is. Anyway, VIX is still fine. Below all pivots, below moving averages. VIX not worried. I'm not worried. So I kind of want to go into the week with a little bit more bullish. I don't want to be too bearish. Uh, but there is an interesting level, a couple uh, on, on VXX is down at its yearly S1. So I'll be watching to see how that reacts. I think first tag probably 
some there'll be some hedging in front of the Fed and CPI. So, but whether that sustains all the way through Wednesday close, we shall see. And then um, HYG has been uh, so junk bond index has been a glaring non-confirm the entire quarter except for one day, meaning it's below its second quarter pivot. So it's it's right around um, this green line uh, quarterly S one and its June pivot. So. That's healthy. That's going to go back up into the range. If it breaks down, then additional sign of trouble. And then uh, lastly, um, other main confirming indicators. Friday was a huge day in the dollar. Huge, huge, big recovery of daily 200 moving average. Still below this 105 area, which is 50 MA and monthly pivot. So above that would really get the dollar and back in an uptrend status. So that would be kind of important. And then the 10-year yield. Um, also big rally above its 200 MA, still a little bit more work to do to recover the trend, but if it really gets above the 450 area, then, you know, that's that all, if all these come together, VIX is going to be up, stocks going to be going down, tech's going to be sold. But so, but I, I doubt there's going to be a huge move in front of the Fed, maybe some nervous selling and hedging. Uh, that's my take. So, so all these are just levels that help me put together a, a picture um then um let's see in terms of specifics for the week i think this week is is even though i'm coming in with a potentially bullish it really is relying on the uh cpi data wednesday and jpal fed uh, i do think monday tuesday are going to be under pressure especially uh later monday early tuesday uh, excuse me, uh, later Monday and Tuesday in general, Tuesdays have been whacked uh, quite often. Just be surprised at how much some of this um, works. Uh, uh, here's return. This is on my Tableau Public free page. This is uh, this year returns by weekday for cryptos. Mondays have been party time and they've been sold on Wednesdays, uh, sold on Tuesdays. Wednesdays have come back, but less so recently, maybe Wednesday. Well, we'll see how the data goes. Uh, so that's a, just a, you know, too simple to believe kind of edge um, on that. And then, um, yeah, Wednesday, we'll see what Jay Powell says. I, I, I'll stress that of all meetings, he's going to just say data, 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 and, and, you know, where some of the recent releases come in relative to what's going on globally that led the ECB uh, to uh, cut. Um, you know, th this is, we have, the, the economy here has the AI innovation. And so, you know, if they don't, and they're fearing some more recession or slower growth, they are more likely to cut. So I, I really just don't know what it's gonna say, especially relative to the expectations. Um, now, let's see. Um, in terms of the week, the pressure Monday afternoon, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll just see how it shakes out. Thursday looks a little bit better. Friday, you know, if the data is okay, could go out in a high um, and, and have another Friday rally and, um, you know, kind of a midweek pullback. It's been a common pattern. And then um, the other thing, um, but, but in general, if there's a big rally, it's going to get sold. And that's, I, I think pros are starting to do that. Um, I want to, before I get off completely on charts, I mean, here's the story that we're not, we're not going to get up. Well, depends on what, how dovish j Pal sounds. He's unlikely to sound extremely dovish. He's just going to be data, data, data. But here's the four hour East ES chart, you know, RSI down here, bought. this was a power trend up move because we just had a major low and got a dip, but now it's kind of the opposite. Like, it's RSI gets up here, they're selling. We've had the big run, but RSI drops back down on the four hour chart, gets bought, get, goes back up, gets sold. This could continue. There's no huge reason to sell indexes. This could continue for many weeks. Could um, I think my most favorite scenario for indexes is kind of sideways and a lot of range trading. But if you kind of had that expectation, then you can watch for these setups and profit, even though it's not like in power up zone as it has been recently and was at various points, especially uh, last fall and earlier this year. In terms of cryptos, 
Uh, cryptos are don't have quite the same data ahead and might be more correlated with the Russell. I'll get to a chart in that in um, a minute. So uh, going back to my Tableau public page, I want to point out um, there is, let's see, um, it's a very short. So this is uh, this is getting slightly into data. So I've already given you my take on the week, and now I'm going to get into a, a little bit about data and uh, try and keep the, fin the AstroLingo out of things. But I, I do use these cycles uh, for key timing points. And just want to say, this is um, Venus through Zodiac signs for Bitcoin. And you know not everyone has massive impact, but here's a major high and a turn. If you start to look closely, you say, wait a second, what's going on? Oh, that was a really big change. That was a big change. This was a very big change very soon after. So we're coming to a change after this week, uh, starting next week, we're gonna go from the blue, light blue to the pink, and uh, sorry, crypto fans, the date on this is just not good. Um, this is uh, looking at um, um, 2015 to current, uh, all markets, and it's one of the weaker signs. And in bull markets, uh, also one of the weaker signs. So it doesn't have to drop, but if it can't get going here in a, a kind of a stronger configuration, I think uh, Bitcoin could could become could go under pressure and maybe um, mirror some of the price action in the Russell as a compared to NASDAQ. Um, so that's some data. The other data that um, I did a whole seminar on uh, recently is uh, moon cycles um, in play for both markets. That's important to say. When I say both markets, I mean SP and Bitcoin. Uh, and, and, but this waxing, waning uh, total return, especially this year, has been especially impressive. It doesn't always work this well, but um, it had a chance for gains, better gains in the waning phase, just tested the high. And so far, the waxing cycle hasn't been uh, nearly as good. But again, if if dollar drops back down, cryptos have a shot at powering up into Friday. That could easily happen. Just stay flexible. And... Um, so that's some data on that. Uh, I'll have um, a full release on my site on that webinar very soon. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to finish a certain script that's going to make it easier to see these uh, changes directly in trading view. And I think that is going to do it. Thank you for your time today. It's going to be a fun week. Watch those wiggles if you want some utter amazement at how uh, short term, if you're, if you're at all interested in short term. Some people are long-term only. And, um, you know, do we have a turn here? I wish I had a crystal ball on the Fed and CPI, but those are just the deciding factors and it is the way it is. We could have seen a major top. It is true. Uh, Crypto Domus is making that case and I don't rule that out at all. But for indexes, my preferred scenario, you know, after this week, we're going to see uh, if there's reason for big selling in weeks ahead, but I think sideways range is more likely. And lastly, I do want to close out for a little bit of a preview for next week's video. Um, what is safe? What is safe? You know, AI trade is kind of safe. Dow, multi, uh, multinational large caps kind of safe. They might be supported. Uh, small caps could be whacked because that's not so safe. Uh, short-term interest, you know, you lock in 5% after, a, if you double your money in your institution NVIDIA and you can lock it in, but still who wants to sell NVIDIA at this point? And dips are going to probably be bought. But what is safe? The other thing that I think I'm watching uh, in terms of um, a, a kind of timing, technical and timing, precious metals got destroyed on Friday, but silver in the big picture has a huge catch up to gold possible and involved with all energy stuff. So I, I think um, it would be interesting to me if silver picks back up again uh, in coming weeks. It's just a maybe at this point. It's not really a good setup, but uh, maybe more about that next week. So th thanks for your time. Thanks for your interest. Happy to answer any questions. I post articles on X, uh, sh YouTube shorts. Um, all right. Have a good one. Good luck in the coming week.